In this video, I'll share with you my process to solve any sliding window problem so you can pass your technical interviews at bank companies. So when it comes to technical interviews, now there's so many lists that people say you should know. And admittedly, when I was trying to learn how to solve these problems, I didn't know where to start. I often tried memorizing solutions, but after a while, I would just forget how to do it again. Eventually, I felt really helpless because I thought the only way I'd pass these interviews is if I somehow practiced the problem before, which is pretty impractical considering there are hundreds of questions an interviewer can choose from. Eventually, I found out a lot of these lists can be broken down to 8 to 10 different patterns, and if you master my process and learn these patterns, I promise to be much more confident that you can solve any leak code problem you haven't seen before. So the pattern I'll go over today is a sliding window. I'll go over the fundamentals of the pattern and then show that I apply the pattern to problems in leak code. So briefly, sliding window is a clever two-pointer technique that allows you to keep track of an array or string in linear time. All you need every time is to initialize the left and right pointer, and there's only two options from then on. You either expand the window, or you shrink the window depending on the condition stated in the problem. So why would you know when to use the sliding window pattern? Normally when you see a problem regarding getting the longest or shortest subarray that fits a certain condition, that most likely means we can solve it with a sliding window pattern. The only check you need to make sure is that all the numbers are positive numbers because the window value may not increase just as the window expands if there are negative numbers in the array. Alright, let's go over an example question. We'll go over 209, minimum size subarray sum. So given an array of positive integers num and a positive integer target, return the minimal length of a subarray whose sum is greater than or equal to the target. If there is no such subarray, return 0 instead. Alright, sounds pretty straightforward, but let's just look at examples just to really make sure we understand it. So you see here, example 1, target 7. Uh, this nums array, is, the answer is 2, right, because 4, 3, which makes sense, 4, 3, is the shortest subarray that is greater than or equal to target. So let's see number 2. Uh, see target is 4, or num is 1, 4, 4. It makes sense the output is 1, right? Because 4 is just the shortest subarray that's equal or greater to target. In example number 3 here, there's no subarray that equals 11 at all. So that's why it equals 0. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Also, we can check the constraints to make sure all elements in the array are positive. Just make sure that we can use a sliding window technique to solve this problem. Now before we even get into the code, I believe the best way to solve these questions is by diagramming it out, because that's often where you can check if your logic is actually correct. It also makes out coding your answer much easier and faster, and reduce potential errors if you draw it out. In your interview, you'll probably need to do it in a comment block, but to make things clear here, I'll draw it on a sketchpad. Okay, how would we approach this problem if we don't know any special patterns? Right, so I'm going to draw the array out here, first example. We could probably just calculate each subarray starting from each index, right? And then we can just work our way up. And then as long as it, you know, greater or equal to 7, then we just store the length in this answer variable. And pretty much through that, we just record the shortest answer and then return that, right? So, you know, let's test this out. So, here, let's start at element 2. Just 5, total 6, this 8, right here. So, this 8, the length 4, right? So, this is a valid subarray. Now, let's go to the next index. So, 3... 1, 2, 6, no, 10. Okay, yep, that's a valid subarray. Length is 4, so we don't need to update it. Let's work our way here. 1, 1, 2, 4. That's a 7. That's a valid subarray. So that, well, that length is shorter than what we've had, so we can update this 4 into 3. Now we have a 2, 4, to 9, right? Length is 3, so we don't need to update it. And then 4 to 3, which is 7, that is a valid subarray. So that length is 2. So as you see, we update it. And now we get a final answer of 2. So this solution does work, but what's the problem with this solution? It's that you're doing a lot of extra calculations, right? As you see here, I'm calculating 3 plus 1 plus 2. I'm calculating 3 plus 1 plus 2 again here. So as you see, we're doing this, there's this inefficiency that we're adding these elements twice. So as you know, is there a better solution? And that's where sliding window technique comes in. So let's try to solve this problem using the sliding window pattern we just learned. So I'm going to draw the array again, and we know our target is 7. Here, I'm going to draw my left and right pointers. I'm then going to have a total variable that's going to keep track of the total in between both my left and right pointers. And then I'm going to have an answer variable, and I'll initialize it as infinity, since we're going to return the minimum. And as long as I find one valid subarray, this variable will update. Okay, so now we can expand our window. So let's start window index 0, and add it to the total. Now, after we expand the window, the total is 2. So 2 is still smaller than 7, so we need to continue expanding out the window until we reach a total that's greater than or equal to 7. Now I move our pointer and add to the total, which then becomes 5. It's still smaller than 7, so we need to continue expanding our window. Now I move the right pointer again and add 1 to the total, which makes the total 6. So we still need to continue expanding our window. Now I move the pointer again to the right, this time adding 2. And now we have a valid window since the total is greater than or equal to 7. So now we can update our answer variable to the length of our current subarray, which in this case is 4. 
Okay, so now since we are looking for the minimum, it makes sense now that the window is valid. We should try to shrink the window again. But should we move the left pointer first or subtract from the total first? It's easy to mix this up, but think about it. If you move the pointer first, you're going to be ending up subtracting element 3 instead of element 2, which should throw off the pattern. So make sure as you shrink the window, first subtract from the total and then move the left pointer. Now with our new window, the total is 6, which is not big enough, so we need to expand the window again, which then gives us a total of 10. Now it's a valid window, but since the length of the subarray is 4 is the same as the answer, we don't need to update our answer variable. We can then shrink our window again by decreasing the total again and then moving our left pointer. We then reach another valid window of 7. This time the length of the subarray is 3, so we can update our answer variable to 3. So we'll do this process all the way until the end, and just like the brute force solution, we will end up with the final answer of 2. Okay, so now let's get into the code, which should be pretty easy now after we drew out the logic. I'm going to code in Python since it's the least verbose. So initialize the left pointer at 0, initialize the total variable to 0, initialize our answer variable to infinity, and then set a for loop on the right pointer, since I want to keep expanding the window until the right pointer reaches the end of the array. And then it's literally coding out our two steps, expanding and shrinking the window. As we expand the window, we need to increment our total variable to wherever the right pointer is. Since we are looking for a minimum, we want to keep shrinking the window, and as long as the total is still greater than or equal to target, we can still possibly update our answer variable. Note that the window is still valid while we are shrinking, since we are looking for a minimum length. While the window is valid, we can then check the current subarray length with our answer variable, and update it if it's lower with the min function. Then it's time to shrink the window and see if we can find a smaller subarray that is valid. And then like I explained earlier, we need to decrement the total first before moving to the left pointer. Now all we need to do is just return our answer variable, but we also need to make sure we account for the case that the answer variable is never updated because we never found a valid subarray that is greater than or equal to target. So make sure to check for that, and then we can return our final answer. See how easy that is? Now let's try it out in another problem to really make sure we really get it. Okay, so let's try another question. We're trying number three, longest substring without repeating characters. So given the string s, find the length of the longest substring without repeating the characters. So we can go through examples as you see that abc is the longest substring without repeating the characters, right? Because you go abc. In example number two, uh, you see b, 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 pretty much everything is repeating characters, so it makes sense the answer is only one. Example three, you see p, w, w, k, e, w. It's either k, e, w or w, k, e are going to be the longest substring without repeating characters. So normally, we just might think to brute force it, right? We'll start a new substring at each index, and once the substring has a repeating character, we'll just stop expanding and record the length, and then start a new substring at a new index. But again, it's very obvious we're doing multiple reads, which isn't efficient. So this problem again, like the previous one, can also be solved with the sliding window pattern. So let's set a left and right pointer, and then an answer variable this time, at negative infinity, because we're trying to get the max length. But there's also a slight difference. How are we going to track the repeating characters? One suggestion is to use a hash map that tracks the letter count as we expand our window. That way, if a letter count in our hash map is more than one, that will let us know there's a repeating character, and that could be our check whether or not to expand our window. So let's test it out. So first, we've got to update our hash map at the right pointer. So let's update our hash map. Letter A now has count one. Then we can check that there are no repeating characters in the window because the letter at the right pointer does not appear more than once. Hence, it's a valid window, and we can update the answer variable to one. Now we can expand our window again. We'll move the right pointer and update our hash map to count letter B. Again, no repeating characters, so we can update the answer variable with our current window length, which in this case is 2. We then expand our window again, and update the hash map. There are no repeating characters, so we can update our answer variable, which is 3 in this case. But now when we expand the window again, and now after updating the hash map, now there's two A's in the hash map. Hence, we now need to shrink our window to make sure there are no repeating characters, and only then we can possibly update our answer variable. Hence, we need to drop letters from that left pointer on until our window is valid. So now let's update our hash map by decrementing what's at the left pointer and then move it to the left. Now that the window is valid again, and we can get its length, but we don't need really to update the answer variable because the length is still 3. So eventually, if you continue this process until the end of the string, the answer variable should remain at 3, which is the correct answer. Awesome. Now let's write this logic in code. So again, we're going to initialize our left pointer to 0, our answer variable to negative infinity, and then we create our hash map to track the letter counts. We then run a for loop to ensure our right pointer hits the end of the string. Then we can go populate the two phases of our pattern, expanding and shrinking the window. So as we expand the window, we make sure to count the letters each time it appears. And then if a letter at the right pointer is greater than 1, we need to continuously shrink the window until that's not the case again. Hence, we decrement the letter count from the hash map first, and then move the left pointer. Now at this point, we know there are no repeat letters in the substring, so we can store its length and update our answer variable whenever we encounter a longer substring with no repeating characters. And then we can just return our answer variable once the right pointer hits the end of the string. If the answer variable has never been updated, be sure to just return 0 instead. 
So test it out, and just like that, we solved it. All right, hopefully now you're ready to solve any sliding window problem you see. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or if there's anything else I can improve. Thanks guys.